Hey Internet, this is Jacob Clifford and I'm assuming you're currently enrolled in an economics class so you're watching this video to practice and that's what it's all about. This is not designed to teach you supply and demand. I have other videos that can help you go over more details or go slower. I'm just going to give you a really fast overview of supply and demand and then we're going to jump into the practice and we're going to spend more of the time on making sure you know how to use supply and demand as opposed to teaching you supply and demand. So keep that in mind and here we go. So as you already learned in class, the demand curve is downward sloping and you can see when the price falls, the quantity demanded goes up and that shows you the law of demand. There's an inverse relationship between price and the quantity demanded, which totally makes sense. When the price falls, people buy more, or when the price goes up, people buy less. And of course, there's also a supply curve that goes up, right? Supply to the sky, and you can see when the price falls, the quantity supplied goes down. Why? Because when the price falls, producers have less incentive to produce stuff, so they produce less. And the price goes up, producers produce more. That's called the law of supply. There's a direct relationship between price and the quantity supplied. Now, when you take the demand curve and put it together with the supply curve, you get equilibrium, which is the market clearing price. That's the exact spot where the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied at that exact price, okay? So equilibrium, boom, right there. Now, if the market's at disequilibrium, for example, if the price is too low, then the quantity demanded would increase, the quantity supplied would decrease, and there'd be a shortage. Remember, shortages are short, right? If you think the price is low, it's shortage. If the price is really high above equilibrium, then the quantity demanded falls, right? People don't really wanna buy it, the quantity supplied would increase, and again, we're not at equilibrium, we're at disequilibrium and there's a surplus. In other words, more units are being produced than people want to actually buy. Now keep in mind, when there's a change in price, it doesn't shift either of the curves, like demand or the supply, neither of them actually shift. So here's your first question. What happens to the demand for a product if the price falls, right? The price falls, what happens to the demand? Well, nothing. Remember, the demand and the supply, they do not change only the quantity demanded would change. So if the price goes down, then the quantity demanded would go up and the quantity supplied would go down. So the quantity changes when there's a change in the price, not the demand, not the supply curve. The curves don't shift. But when there's a change of something else other than the price of the actual product, then the curve does shift. So the demand curve shifting to the right is an increase in demand. A uh, shift to the left is a decrease in demand. And the same thing for supply, and right is an increase in supply, left is a decrease in supply, okay? There's also five shifters of demand and five shifters of supply. But just knowing the list of the shifters isn't enough. You have to be able to draw the graph and show what happens to price and quantity. How does the equilibrium price and quantity change. For example, if I asked you to draw market equilibrium, you've got demand, supply, equilibrium, and let's say the demand goes up. I give you a scenario and you figure out demand goes up. Well, the demand curve shifts to the right, so that old demand curve disappears, and that quantity equilibrium is no longer there. That's actually the quantity supplied now, and at that low price, the quantity demanded is right here, so there's a shortage, and the shortage causes the price to go up to that new equilibrium, right? So, Prices will automatically adjust, we assume, quickly, so when there's a shift that occurs, just draw the demand curve, shift it to the right, price and quantity go up, that's what you have to be able to draw and understand. And although it seems complicated, it's actually not that hard. Remember, there's only four things that can happen. The demand can decrease, the demand can increase, the supply can decrease, or the supply can increase. So only four possible shifts can happen, and you just look at the graph, right? The best part of an econ class is you can cheat. You draw the graphs, the graph tells you what happens to price and quantity. Just look at the original price and quantity and draw the curve, draw the shift, label the new price and quantity, boom, price changes, quantity changes. Now stop. In the name of love. I know I just went really fast that whole thing, but remember this video is about reviewing and practicing. So I did not try to teach you supply and demand right there. I just went way too fast. And if you're totally lost, if you're like, dude, I have no idea what he was talking about, the whole idea of the curve shifting or the idea of moving along the curve, and you're totally lost, then go back and rewatch supply and demand videos I've already made. They give them more details or go back and look at your notes, but you're not quite ready to practice if you're totally lost at this point. So right now we're jumping to practice. Here we go, good luck. So right here I have eight practice questions or scenarios. Your job is to figure out what happens to the demand, the supply, the price, and the quantity for fidget spinners. So every single one of these scenarios is talking about the supply and demand for fidget spinners. So if you wanted to draw a graph for each one of these, you could and identify what's gonna happen to, again, demand or supply and what happens to price and quantity. And that's the key. Focus on what happens to the change in price and quantity. So here you go, you are on your own. Pause the video, see if you're getting it. Figure out if it's demand or supply, then I'll go over the answers to all of them and we'll drop the grass and you can check yourself, okay? Good luck. For the first scenario here, it says that fidget spinners significantly improve learning and attention in the classroom and they've actually found out they don't, but let's say they do, right? So they make you more intelligent and a better student. 
so what would happen? Well, the demand would increase. People would want to buy more of these. Parents want to buy them for their kids because they want their kids to be smart. So the demand curve would shift to the right, causing the price to go up and the quantity to go up. So there's your right answer. That's the graph you're looking for. Now, if you thought, well, uh, producers would realize they should make more because people want more, that's a different concept, right? You're trying to do like the next level down the road. The first shift is what we're asking. What happens? What's the first thing that shifts? This is definitely a demand shifter. And the shifter was taste and preferences. People prefer that their children are smarter. Scenario number two, we're talking about a supply shifter, right? The bearings, the or key resource to producing fidget spinners now are more expensive. So if they're more expensive, that means you cannot produce as many fidget spinners that need those bearings. So supply curve would shift to the left, causing the price to go up and the quantity to decrease. Now keep in mind, a decrease in supply is always to the left. A lot of times students wanna go, oh, a decrease, a decrease in supply, don't do that, right? That's the class mistake, don't do it. Increase is always to the right for both demand and supply. A decrease is always to the left for both demand and supply. In this case, supply is shifted to the left, price goes up, quantity goes down. For number three, we're talking about a substitute, in this case, fidget cubes, right? Not fidget spinners, but fidget cubes, their price is cheaper. So it's really cheap, it costs you know three cents to go get a fidget cube, so people are gonna buy less fidget spinners because they're substitutes for each other. So the demand's gonna fall, price and quantity both go down, there's your graph. Now when you're doing these questions, keep in mind that you have to ask yourself, is it affect buyers or producers, right? If you, if you keep that in mind, it makes these really easy. In this scenario, the price of fidget cubes decreases, that's gonna affect buyers. Buyers are gonna react first to that, that's why it's a decrease in demand. Now number four, I'm trying to be tricky here, the price fell for fidget spinners. In the last two questions, prices change, but they weren't the price of the product, right? In scenario two, the price of bearings increased, right? So that's a different resource. That's not the product we're analyzing, that's a resource of the product we're analyzing. And in scenario three, it was the price of fidget cubes, a different product. But in scenario four, it's the price of the actual product that we're analyzing. So if the price decreases, that is not gonna shift the curve. There is no shift. The quantity demanded would go up, the quantity supplied would go down, and we'd have a shortage, we'd be at disequilibrium. So there it is, price down, quantity would fall, technically, because the quantity supplied is the only amount that's actually bought and sold. So the quantity supplied uh, is the new quantity, so we be at disequilibrium, Price went down, quantity went down. For number five, the government provided a subsidy for these fidget spinners. I'm not sure why, but they did. And that means that it's gonna increase the supply. A subsidy is when the government gives money to producers to produce more stuff. Remember, it's the opposite of a tax. So supply curve shifts to the right, price goes down, and the quantity goes up. There's the graph. Did you get it? In number six, it talks about income and a recession. Those are demand shifters, right? Because income is a shifter of demand. In this case, it's a normal good. Fidget spinners are a normal good, which means when incomes fall, people buy less of them. So the demand falls, shifts to the left, price goes down, quantity goes down. Now, remember, there's a difference between a normal good and an inferior good. An inferior good is the opposite. When incomes fall, people buy more of it. So like top ramen, but that's not what's going on here. They told you in the question, it's a normal good. Now, your teacher on a test question will tell you if something is substitute or a compliment or if it's a normal good or uh, inferior good. So keep in mind, don't just guess. And if you have no clue and you're looking at a question like what, raise your hand and call your teacher over and be like, okay, are these substitutes for each other? Are they compliments? Are they normal good? Is it an inferior good? Uh, you, you shouldn't have to guess on these, it should tell you. In scenario seven, it says the price of a complementary product decreases. So it's cheaper, this other product that you would buy with fidget spinners. Now, funny enough, I couldn't think of a complementary product. Like, what do you buy with fidget spinners? I, I don't know, but I gave you the scenario anyways. The answer is demand would increase, right? Price and quantity would go up. Why? Because if the thing that you would buy with fidget spinner, spinners gets cheaper, then you would buy more of those, or quantity demand would increase with those, and then you'd buy more fidget spinners as well, because you know these two things go together. And so the demand would increase for the fidget spinners. Now, in scenario eight, I'm trying to be really tricky, and this is a hard question because it's a double shift. If the demand and the supply both increase. Now, of course, you already know what it looks like on the graph, so just draw the graph. It gives you the right answer. Demand shift to the right, right? Price would go up, quantity would go up, but we're not done. Supply shift to the right, so the price would go down and the quantity would go up. And we end up with a new scenario with a new equilibrium right here. Now, it looks like the price is the same, but it's not. The price is indeterminate. Indeterminate means you can't tell. It might go up, it might go down. It depends, or it's ambiguous. The quantity, no matter what's gonna go up, so it doesn't matter how you drew this, quantity goes up. So the answer to the question when there's a double shift is always either price or quantity. Something is gonna be indeterminate. Uh, I made a video talking about double shifts if you wanna go practice more of this, but you should know how to do double shifts when two curves shift at the same time. And by the way, that's exactly what happened in real life 
with fidget spinners, right? When the demand increased, and you know, last year fidget spinners became a thing, people are buying them, they're all excited about these things, and the demand went up. And when the demand goes up for something, you expect the price to go up and the quantity to go up. But producers reacted relatively quickly and realized, oh, consumers want this stuff, and they started making more of them. And that increased the supply. So the price didn't really go up a lot for fidget spinners because producers produce a whole lot more of them. So this actual graph is the real thing that happened in real life. In fact, you could probably make an argument now, the supply has increased even further to the point where now fidget spinners are really, really, really cheap because producers are producing so many of them, right? Because they're reacting to that initial change in demand. Anyways, this stuff is real life and that's why you're learning it. Please do me a favor, leave a comment, let me know if this video is helpful and let me know what concepts or ideas you want me to make another practice video for, okay? Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell. You're awesome, you rock. Until next time.